next in line we have Sanjana, you're doing it, right? Yeah. Importance of microbiology in microbial keratitis. I think it's a very vital topic. Uh, it's important for us ophthalmologists to learn about ocular microbiology. I don't uh, really think that most of the microbiologists are equipped to deal with small, uh, like uh, if you have only small amount of infiltrate, they cannot identify most of the time. So I believe we have to equip ourselves. Yes, Sanjana. A very good morning to one of you all. At the outset, I would like to thank ASOS as well as uh, Dr. Anil sir for giving me this opportunity. So today I'll be speaking about the importance of microbiology in infective keratitis. My colleague Dr. Vivek has already detailedly explained, explained the classical features of all these bacteria and funguses. Infective keratitis is an ocular emergency. If appropriate treatment is not given, then these patients can go in for corneal scarring or even endophthalmitis. Culture and direct microscopy play a key feature in their diagnosis. So, my colleague has already gone through all the classical clinical features, but, and based on this, we normally tend to treat the patient just directly by looking at their clinical features. But do you think all the ulcers read the textbook? I don't think the organisms go through the classical features every time. Sometimes they will be already treated with steroids, or they may be given already a free uh, antibiotic or an antifungal course. So all of them do not normally follow the classical feature. Hence, microbiology forms a connect between the clinical features and the treatment with yielding best results. In microbiology, we have direct microscopy, culture and sensitivity, PCR. But some of the recent advances are aptamers and mass spectrometry. Coming to sample procuring, we can use corneal scraping with the help of spatula or blade. We can use the needle. We can do a corneal biopsy or the corneal button, AC tap, contact lens also can be sent. Preferably a 15 number blade is used because 11 number blades are very sharp. So once the pre-anesthetic drop is instilled on the inside the patient's eye, we place them on the slit lamp and scraping is done from the base of the ulcer as well as from the edges. Recently, we have something called as a transport media, wherein we can place these samples in the transport media and transport it to tertiary centers where there is accessibility for ocular microbiology. So the samples in these transport media can all at least be there for 24 to 48 hours without major contamination. It, it helps in easy inoculation and it helps everyone, each and every individual to access ocular microbiology. So once we take the sample, in case we are doing a gram stain, we need to place it on the slide and crush the sample. Once the sample is crushed, a proper gram staining has to be done according to the known pattern and then we get the result. In case of KOH, we have to directly place 10% KOH, one drop of it on the slide and look under the oil immersion. So once we do that, we get to know basically whether it is gram positive, negative or fungal filaments. So gram stain not only yields bacteria, but sometimes we also get to identify the fungal hyphase or even acanthamoebal cysts, while KOH helps us to I find out whether they are hyphated, septate or aseptate fungi. Some of the special stains, if you are suspecting these infections, we need to mention to the microbiologist to do a Zeal-Nielsen stain to identify a nocardia or acid fast bacilli, or in case of uh, acanthamoeba, we can insist them on doing a GMSA stain. Culture sensitivity, again, once the scraping, a part of it is sent for direct microscopy, the scraping has to be plated on a blood agar in a C-shaped format or directly dipped into a SDA agar or a potato dextrose agar. The benefit of place plating it in a C-shaped format is that in case there is a contamination, it is easy to identify as the organisms that we require would follow the C-shaped path. Contact lenses need to be directly placed. Corneal buttons and iris tissues need to be directly placed on the blood agar to yield results. So these are some of the microbiological samples which we have got, uh, following which we have treated the patient. And some of the recent ones are the pythium, which has this type of appearance. So once this is done, the dog, and most commonly if we have a bacterial sample positive, we do the antibiotic sensitivity. So the culture is taken and placed on the agar plate, and these discs containing antibiotics are plated on these plates. So once we get to know the zone of inhibition, we can tell which antibacterial is sensitive and which antibacterial is resistant to these organisms. So with the help of microbiology, the above mentioned cases were treated. 
Some of them healed very well, while a couple of them had to undergo keratoplasty as they were resistant fungi. So we have something called as a Vitek now recently being used by the microbiologist, which is an automated system to identify and find the sensitivity of these bacterial pathogens and yeasts. So what they actually do is from the culture plate, they place it inside the test tube in a particular manner, after which these cards are placed and the um, entire package is placed inside the Vitek machine. So you have the biochemical tests run into these samples, because of which you get to know all your oxidase tests, indole tests, cons negative, cons positive, all these comes as a single result in the plate. So this is slightly more sensitive compared to the direct analysis based on their growth pattern in culture sensitivity. So these cards come out like this which are sealed and thus we can identify what type of a bacteria it is. Yet direct microscopy and culture sensitivity have their own limitations. We cannot send a liquid sample because it's slightly difficult. Sample size needs to be adequate. Small scrapings do not yield result or small materials do not yield results. Viral in infections are in almost nearly impossible to culture. Delayed results, in case of bacteria, it may take 48 hours. In case of funguses, it may take nearly two weeks for us to yield the result. And there is always a risk of contamination. And for this, we had the PCR. RT-PCR mainly amplifies the sample and thus helps us to identify. It yields us faster result. It is more sensitive and more accurate. Helps us identify polymicrobial and especially the viral infections. So we have a lab wherein we send these tabs, AC tabs, vitreous tabs, which yields us the uh, results. So we normally ask the uh, microbiologist to give us the eubacterial or the pan fungal uh, results. Or in case we are spe uh, suspecting a specific virus, we can always tell them what type of it is required for a result. So it basically uses the DNA from the culture for sequencing and amplifying and thus giving us the result. Some of the newer advances, as I mentioned, was instead of the DNA, the protein samples are taken for sequencing. So this is called as MALD or Matrix Assisted Laser Desorption Ionization Time of Flight. So basically what happens in this is that these protein molecules are broken down by the laser because of which they undergo ionization into ions and the time of flight of these ions are re registered and the pattern of it is different for every bacteria. So these are some of the pre-existing uh, samples wherein you already have a documented record of what is the pattern of these uh, bacteria. So when we do the MALDI-TOF, if they fall under the similar uh, pattern, we can identify what type of bacteria they are. So the benefits definitely is faster identification and higher specificity, specificity. But the drawback is that we cannot identify unknown pathogens. If we do not have their already previous specified pattern, it becomes a little difficult and also the higher equipment cost. To conclude, the take home messages is that scraping of all microbiological lab setup in the clinic, at least for the KOH mounting is uh, suitable. Avoid mixed treatment without knowing what organism we are treating. Refer to higher center in case of absence of microbiology and always re-scrape after 48 hours if there is no response to treatment. Thank you. Yeah, that was an excellent talk, Sanjana. I think uh, the newer advances are also, it was quite comprehensive and even the newer advances were co well covered. Yeah, uh, do we have time for a quick question? Uh, this Maldi, is it done anywhere in Kerala? I mean, uh, in Kerala it is not, sir. Only Prasad Savitri Madam is uh, doing. So Madam is doing here, here in Kerala right now. In uh, our hospital we have the PCR. RT-PCR is uh, being done, sir. Okay. Next, uh, thank you so much for this wonderful talk, Dr. Sanjana.